been very clear that uh, there should not be a war in uh, the Ukraine or U a war that, uh, or, or let me reframe it. Okay. What we've been very clear about is the issue that uh, there's been a playing out of a proxy war because this is not just about Russia and the Ukraine. This is about NATO. This is about interests of uh, various major players. And we've always had a commitment that says um, we need to ensure that there's peace and the patron has been very clear on conflict resolution and on peace on the African continent and elsewhere. We've also been very clear around unipolarity. We can't have a single narrative at any particular point in time. And I think, unfortunately, we've seen that uh, playing itself out. So our commitment as part of a non-aligned commitment is that we won't get directly involved in this particular conflict. However, we're also committed to those who say there's a need to find a speedy solution. And that solution should not be seen as leaning towards the interest of any particular bloc. We've seen uh, the, what does one call it, the instrumentalization or the weaponization of uh, the financial system. We've seen the weaponization through sanctions placed on Russia where fertilizer, for example, cannot reach African countries. And it's quite critical that we look at the interests of the continent at this point in time, the question of food security, the, able, uh, the ability to access uh, uh, for agricultural purposes to access fertilizer and hence the foundation is involved in an initiative together with the Edinburgh University um, where we've pulled together a number of players to look at how best we can overcome this issue of sanctions on Russian fertilizers. Now, you get people say, well, there's not sanctions. However, there's an inability for movement of fertilizer because the individual European countries have exercised their own sanctions. So we're saying, let's deal with this in a way where you think of humanity as a whole and you don't think of your own particular geopolitical interest around this. And I, and, and, and I think our commitment is Africa should have a position. Very clearly, um, there is a recognition of the importance of the continent in all this. And we believe that Africa together should look at a solution where we're actually saying, we've got experience as well. Let's uh, look at uh, making ourselves available to help, re help resolve this conflict. And now you have this major problem, the conflict in Sudan. Sudanese have reached out to the patron in particular around this conflict. And they have indicated major concerns around what seems to be taking the form of almost a civil war, if we can call it that. And hence he strongly called out for uh, the rebel group, if I can refer to them as such, to actually uh, step down and for all parties to find a peaceful resolution. I mean, what we're seeing there is quite devastating and it's rolling back the, you know, the gains that have been there. And I think, yes, Sudanese need to come together and really resolve this matter. This is the moment where the African Union must come to the fore because we can't be failing a member state in this particular manner. This problem should not be solved by anyone externally. This is a problem that the Union must deal with. And there's sufficient eminent leaders and former leaders who can play a proactive role to deal with it. Finally, on the lecture, looking forward to the lecture this year. 
Yes, this year we're having Professor Sibu Grovegia. We are for the first time having this lecture outside of South Africa. So we're going to Guinea Conakry and uh, we will come together, look at various challenges around institutions, touch on governance, but also in the build up to the le lecture, there will be meetings both with government, civil society and academia.